Hey guys, uh, I dare say I think I might have figured it out after I wasting money on a new tool. I think it's the publisher's PowerPoints that are causing the issue. All right, so this is where we left off on um, blood. So we this is where we're picking up. Um, okay, so the blood types. Um, when we talk about, when you guys hear me talk about these, I call these surface antigens. Oh, she knows it again. I call these surface antigens. I abbreviate them A, G. Look at that. No crazy lines. All right. They are on the plasma membrane of the red blood cells. And there's surface antigens on all types of cells in the body, but we're focusing on red blood cells because um, you guys really, really, really want to understand how to do blood typing um, and make sure that things are correct so you can properly take care of your patients. If an if blood types are crossed, um, and if we're not talking about O for some reason, or O negative being the universal donor, um, if you give somebody who has type A blood a transfusion from type B, it will kill them. So I wanna give you guys a quick overview of the directionality for blood donations. You can do from O to A or B, and then from A or B, to AB, or you can do O straight to AB. If you mess up the directionality of these arrows, you will kill a patient. You can also go from negative to positive, but if you go the other way, again, you can kill somebody. When we talk about negative or positive, we're talking about this RH or D factor. Um, I usually refer to it as RH. They're more not commonly now calling it type D, but there's over 40, I think there's 48, so if you move on to nursing and medicine, just having an idea of these four, A, B, um, O, and R, H, is going to have you get give you a good setup for understanding blood typing. So again, when I use the antigens, I'm abbreviating. They're on top. They're on the outside of your red blood cells. So I'm going to make this look like a little A, little A, little A, and A. Now your book describes them differently, but B would have, I'm put little Bs on the outside, okay? Um, I don't know if I can draw backwards. Kind of looks horrible, but whatever. And then O doesn't have anything. They're just little tiny landing pads. Um, we're gonna get into all this, but when I'm talking about what's out here, these are the antigens here, okay? And notice that O doesn't have any, all right? Um, RH would have like little negatives hanging out, RH negative. Not charges, but just like little negatives. Um, actually, that's wrong. The positives would have something hang out. So we'll draw little pluses, little pluses, right? Um, and then if you have R, if you're if you're in any type of negative O negative, for example, um, you would have anti RH. So you'd have antibodies that are against RH if you're anti-negative. And this is confusing and the terminology is confusing. So if you have to visit this video more than once or you need to look at the book more than once, you are not alone. This, the terminology makes this confusing. So antibodies are gonna be um, free floating. They are in the, they are a type of immunoglobulin, specifically type M, which looks like this. It is a pentamere, it has five parts. Okay, so again, antigens on the outside of the red blood cells antibodies are free floating um, and they're going to be in the blood and the plasma. Okay. So for our four types of blood, right? Um, we can't initially type uh, in, like a newborn's blood unless you use gene, gene typing, which isn't very common, um, but it does not going to change throughout your life. It just takes um, a newborn baby a while um, because these actually develop after exposure. The genes actually begin to be expressed after exposure to um, your the, their actual GI tract. So it takes them a little while. But anyway, so if you have type A blood, again, you're going to have the antigen on the surface like I drew in the last slide. So it'll be right over here in little A's all over the place. This is so much better without lines, guys. I don't even have to cuss anymore. All right. If you have B, it would be the, the Bs that I had drawn, right? And they're going to be on that surface. But also keep in mind when they talk about anti 
something, anti-whatever. They're talking about those pentameric um, forms, and it'll be anti-B, right? So anti, we do just this side, it would be anti-B. So if you have little Bs, right? Um, so it would be anti-B. If you were to draw out the pentameric shape, if it's anti-B, it's going to have to fit on something like this, and it'd be attached to the pentamer. You have like five of them. Right, it looks like anti A, but those are supposed to be more circular. Now you guys can see I'm not great at art. Okay, um, anti that would be A type A, and then so their antigens are A, but the anti anti um, antibodies are B anti B. So an, they're going to call it anti B. For B, you'd have the B blood, right? So right here be the B blood plus you're gonna have anti A. So it would be the pentameric version and it would attack something that's shaped like an A right here, like this. Okay. Um A B, if you had any of these, um plus nothing, right? Because if you have any of these immunoglobulins attacking the red blood cells, it would rupture them all and the person would die. So if you think about the way I drew these out, the type a B blood has, here's a red blood cell for them. They have an A and then they have a B and then they have an A and they have a B. So if you think about it, use those wonderful brain cells we've got. Um, if you had these anti antis in there or antibodies in there, it would rupture this guy and the person would die. So keep that in mind because a lot of that's one of the major misconceptions students have. If you have type O on the other hand, you're going to have both anti A and anti-B. So if you get A blood or B blood or AB blood, this is going to lice them all. And that hemolysis or um, agglutination that starts to occur, hemolysis is actually more precise, um, would would kill a patient. And again, by the time you realize it's the cross-reaction has started to happen, the patient's probably dead. Um, are very quickly on their way to being dead. And it's the 21st century and still we still lose about 10 patients a year in just Florida um, and across the nation's hundreds because um, people are either typed incorrectly or the blood bag that's pulled or the information that's on their bracelet is incorrect. It's not compatible. So we're gonna get into that. All right, so when we talk about RH blood group, that's the one their book also calls D, right? So if you're RH positive, you have your, um, your little blood guy. He's going to have a little positive. He's going to have a little positive. Let's make these a little bit easier to see, right? Um, so, but he doesn't have, he's not going to have anything against the RH negative. So he doesn't have an anti anything right here. If you, however, are O negative, instead of having little positives on the outside, you just have a little spot where an antigen, excuse me, an antigen could buy him or an antibody could bind, but it doesn't. But in the blood, you'll have serum that's anti-RH or anti-D, however you want to say that. All right, so if you gave somebody who has type O blood that's negative, um, if you gave them positive O positive blood, you would kill them. So remember the directionality on this is from positive. Oops, no, it's not. It's from negative to positive. Let's make sure I didn't mess that up. I got it right here. Yay. Okay. So it's from negative to positive. So that's why O, I'll go back here again. O is a universal donor, especially O negative. I should say specifically O negative is a universal donor. AB is, this is a universal donor, A O negative. And AB positive is the universal acceptor. Okay. Um, so I don't ever say this agglutinogens. I don't ever say that. This they're the antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. Okay, the immune system, which we'll get into in an entire chapter, does screen this and almost every other cell in your body to make sure that it belongs there. It's not something that's foreign or from somebody else. Um, the glutenins, these guys, are the antibodies found in the plasma, and I believe them this way. All right, so. Uh, if these these antibodies are what cause the clumping reactions um, and then eventually the hemolysis. 
by the way, the reason that I got rid of those lines is and the reason this looks different from what's posted online is because I just made a new PowerPoint. Um, it was apparently a combination of the video casting that I'm using and the publisher's PowerPoint. So <clears throat> if you have, this is the wordy version, there's a figure version, but basically remember if you have type A, you have the anti-B. If you have type B, you have anti-A. If you have type O, you have both anti-A and anti-B. If you have type AB, you're not going to have either. And keep in mind to remember that if you had them, it would bring, if you had AB blood and then your antibodies were anti-A and anti-B, you would lice these, you would rupture them, and then the person would die. So instead of memorizing everything, try to use logic and synthesis and analyze your way through a problem. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, sensitization or being coming sensitized um, to RH+. Plus. If you have RH negative blood, and we're going to talk about that in the context of hemolytic disease of the newborn. So HGN is what it's usually called. I refer to it as hemolytic disease of the newborn, but whatever. Okay, so the, the picture version. So if you have type A, right, this, these are the little A's I drew, right? This is the antigen, AG, on the surface. You have antigen A, then these are the pentameric immunoglobulins we call antibodies that but they're anti b so they are like hey i don't like b you're not good enough for me right um whereas if you have type b blood and these antigens on the surface are for b only you're gonna have anti a a is not good enough for me if you have a and b again you're not gonna have either so there's nothing here no pentameric immunoglobulin um, because if you did, it would attack these guys, the A's, right? And it would attack these guys, the B's, the antigens on the surfaces. So there's no antibodies present, zero present here for type AB. That's one thing students miss. They confuse it. But, you know, come back and listen to this again. Look at the book. What have you got to do? Ask questions um, so that you get this right. Um, it's one of the most frequently missed topics. All right, type O blood. Notice there are no sur surface antigens, right? So they lack. They don't have any surface antigens. However, the antibodies present are both anti-A and anti-B. Anti-A and anti-B. So this is, again, one of the things students can confuse. So keep, it, keep in mind, um, when we go through this, the directionality I showed you. So from O to A for a blood donation, you can go from O to A to AB, O negative specifically, and O to B to AB. All right, you can skip, if you don't have whatever, you can just go, if you have a person who's AB positive and they're bleeding out in the emergency room or an ambulance, you can give them O negative blood, all right? Uh, okay, so I think I beat that one to death. All right, so here's an example. Uh, this thing. Sorry, I don't know why it's there. It's annoying. All right, so here's an example of a cross reaction. So we have somebody who has, based on the diagrams they drew, is a B blood B blood type, and then they're exposed to anti B antibodies. Okay, when that happens, they bind. See these little um, triangle looking receptors at the end bind to the antigen surface on the red blood cells and lyse them. By the time you see this happen in a patient, they're already dead. There's really no way we have to reverse this yet. Oh, I wanted to come back and mention something. Um, so a gentleman named Charles G Drew, Charles Drew, used what information he had had and been working with um, and was able to come up with blood banking. Now he was he migrated immigrated from Canada after getting his medical degree in Canada. He moved down to the United States, and I think it was Yale he practiced that. But um, he came down to southern United States um, and was volunteering at Tuskegee Air Force Base to help people. And unfortunately, on his way to the hospital, uh, he was in. A car accident and he was bleeding severely and died. He actually happened to be a person of color. Person of color. 
and back then because of white supremacy, if you were a person of color, you could not receive blood from a white person or vice versa because they thought that they were different races. I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. I'm saying that this is a myth. And the gentleman who invented blood banking and saved thousands upon thousands of life lives in World War II died because of racism. That's what I'm saying. Full history. And props to him for discovering it because we don't give enough props to people who are not white. By the way, I'm white if you're weirded out by this. Just throwing us under the bus. Okay, so blood tapes. Um, we want to do cross-matching tests, and the pictures are really helpful here. Um, again, there's about 48 surface antigens besides A, B, um, and RH. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of them. And remember, type O negative is the universal donor. Type A, B positive is the universal acceptor. Okay, pictures, pictures, pictures. Okay, so if you have A, B, right, and you add in, oh, let me start up here. Let me start up at the top. Sorry, guys. If you have anti-A, that means it's against A, right? So it's going to attack A. Um, if we add anti-A and these are cultured or, yeah, we, we get these serum, we don't, we don't culture them. We purify them up in labs and do this specifically in labs. And this would have been an, a, a cool experiment we did in lab if you guys got to go to labs, but can't do that right now. So if you have anti-A, again, it's going to be against A. So if it clumps, you're going to say, oh, I put an anti-A and I saw clumping. It's going to have an A. This person's going to have an A blood type. I put an anti-B and there was no clumping. That means there are no B antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. If you see clumping when you add the anti-D or anti-RH, then you know this person is A positive. Okay. So anti-A means that their little red blood cells have little A's on them. Okay? Uh, not That's not really how it works, but it's a, it's, it's a way to help you guys visualize it. It kind of looks like a little guy with, I don't know, little king or something. I don't know. If, however, we're talking about the next patient, put anti-A in, there's no clumping. So there's no reaction here. Then we add anti-B and there is clumping. Like, okay, this little red blood cells, they have little anti, they have little antibodies for B on it. So that's a B. If we then see clumping again for the RH factor, then we know this person is B positive. Okay. So for the last, no, last two, um, we see clumping with anti-A. We know, okay, the red blood cells have the, the antigen A on them. We see clumping. We know it's an A type. We, oh, look at this. We see clumping with this guy. We also know the red blood cell has Bs on it. Okay. The antigens are B. So we know this is an AB person. And check that out. It clumps with RH. We also know that they are RH positive. Now, <clears throat> when we look into the O type, the O bloods, remember, don't have any antigens, right? Um, right. So there's no clumping here under anti-A. There's no clumping under anti-B. And there's no clumping with anti-RH, meaning this person is O negative. So here we have the universal. I'm hoping you just said donor in your head. And here we have the universal. I'm hoping you just said acceptor in your head. All right. So, um, all right. Hemolytic disease, the newborn. I found an issue with your textbook. I need to email the publisher. Where's that second thing? All right. So... There's a big old spotlight figure 1918. I'm sorry, 19.8, which is right here. Dur, dur, dur. Um, and it's two covers two pages. It's 672 to 673. Right. So generally we don't see problems in the first pregnancy um, because it takes a what's called a fetal bleed. Mom has to be exposed to the RH positive baby through a fetal bleed, and that's when the placenta separates, and there's still baby's blood in the umbilical cord. But generally, they're not exposed. So this is an RH negative mother. See, so they're A negative, or they're B negative, or they're O negative, or they're A, B negative, okay? Um, if the father was any of these positive all the way down, um, and B, positive is negative to, or excuse me, positive is 
dominant to negative. If the father, if the baby got a, a copy of the positive gene, the baby's going to end up being RH positive. And I kind of don't want to write here because the baby's head is weird. Um, okay. So once there's a placental bleed, either mom got into an accident and baby's okay, but there was a small tear and blood got across the placental barrier or mom gives gives birth and when the, umbil the umbilical and the afterbirth happened, the placenta comes out, there's a little bit of blood crossing, like I mentioned, um, then mom's going to be exposed. And remember the desensitization is if you go from RH negative and they're exposed to RH positive, okay? So once they're exposed, they're gonna start to build up antibodies um, in the, in mom, mom, it's going to start to build up anti, excuse me, RH positive antibodies, right? So it, the book suggests that mom, an RH negative mother does not need to be treated with Rogam. That's the, uh, the name brand, but need, does not need to be treated with anti-RH during the first pregnancy. That is not correct. That is incorrect. Hopefully you're listening to this lecture and you find that out before you miss it on the test. Okay. So during the first pregnancy, if you have an RH positive mother, you will give her the Rogram, the name brand shot, or the generic shot that will trick her immune system the thinking gives you temporary um, antibodies against RH positive. Now, by the time mom gets pregnant again, these antibodies, these anti-RHs that we created and gave her a shot of will be cleared from the body. Okay. So they need to be given approximately week 28 of the first pregnancy of an RH mother. And then again, um, during birth, so that could be weeks 36 to 40. And then most doctors I've talked to recently, um, they'll do it again at least a month, but the first three months after birth, just to make sure that mom's body doesn't attack the baby across the placenta. Because if mom body, mom's body is allowed to develop anti-RH+, it's going to cross the placenta and attack the baby. So when you, when you read this in the book, make sure you understand it's the first pregnancy they start treating. And I have a buddy of mine who went in with his wife and his wife was RH negative and he was RH negative, but the nurse asked the baby's mom um, if she was RH negative and she was like, yes, I am. And she's like, okay, well, we're gonna schedule your Rogam for approximately week 28, right? Um, unless you have a fetal bleed before that from a car accident or something like that. Um, and then at birth and then one, one to 90 days after birth. Okay. And my friend got all grumpy because he was like, well, I'm RH negative too. How come I don't get to say, why didn't you ask me? And the nurse looked at him and was like, I don't know that you're the father, which I thought was pretty hilarious because this guy's kind of snooty, but whatever. Um, <laughs> anyways, so, um, if you're an RH negative mother, you will get the, have to get the shot. Um, around week 28, um, during delivery and then shortly after delivery. So, and that is the first pregnancy. Unlike what your book says, it's like, we're going to prepare her after her first birth. Yeah. The book is, I'm going to, don't worry. I want to talk to them. All right. So, um, this just goes through how there's a little bit of mixing if you have, um, and how you get mom, the RH negative mom would be sensitized. Right. And there's a little bit of, um, blood at the delivery or there's a fetal, what they don't include is the fetal bleed, like a small car accident or something like that. Okay. And then mom builds up antibodies, which would then attack an RH positive baby later down the road. So I made this as big as I could get it. Um, this is what would happen. And you'd end up with a baby that looks, if they're, if they're Caucasian or white, they end up looking yellow or jaundice. Um, if they're, um, not, if they're mixed, a color, a pigmentation in their skin, you would see it in the whites of their eyes. Um, and we use a different forms of therapy now. It used to be pretty much a death sentence for children. Um, but in the last 
I'm not going to tell you how old I am. In the last um, 25 years, it's come it's come a long way. Oh, did this one actually get it? Okay, so they might this the PowerPoint might actually be correct, but the book, I think where I, when I read it in the book, it said the second pregnancy. So during the first, just remember the mom's gonna have to get the um, the trickery for the anti RH injected, and literally just tricks her body into thinking she's made these. Right, this is how the Rogam shot works. Mom's body thinks she's made them. Mom's body thinks she's safe. The body clears them. The next baby is safe to be born without hemolytic disease of the newborn. Okay. All right. So, oh my gosh, can we ever end this chapter? All right, I'm going to pause here and I will see you guys in the next video. No, seriously, pause.